This is the new Toyota BZ4X and it's a little bit like the Tokyo Tower because it is a landmark for Toyota. Believe it or not, this is their first ever built from the ground up series production car that's a full EV. Yes, they're a little late to the electric car party, aren't they? But then again, Japan was late to the whole iron structure party with the Tokyo Tower. It was based on the Eiffel Tower, which first opened in 1889, whereas the Tokyo Tower didn't open until 1958. Anyway, enough of the history lesson. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior of this car. I'm gonna show you through the interior. I'm gonna see how practical it is, and I'm gonna test drive it in town, on a country road, and on the motorway. And of course, I'm gonna launch it. See how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour, because it's an electric car, and I'm at Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of this BZ4X. So it's got a very steeply raked rear window. This interesting spoiler design, actually on the entry level car, the spoiler is slightly smaller. A huge light bar. Generally, this part I like. What I don't like so much is this bit here. I don't know why this isn't body colored when this is the top of the range model. Is this supposed to be a fake diffuser? I think so bad. Other than that though, I do like the rear of this car. Down the sides, this has 18 inches, which is going to be too small. I don't like this cladding though. Once again, I wish it was body coloured. Also, I don't like the way it cuts through the charging port cover. There's quite a lot of this, isn't there? Andy, a look. You got this, it just feels cheap and old fashioned, which is a bit of a shame because I really, really like the design of the front of the car. Look, this chrome panelling here. It's really quite nice and a very distinctive stylish face. As for pricing, the BZ4X range starts from just under £42,000. Now, if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price for whichever car you're buying, head over to CarWow. You can see what savings are available on a wide range of cars. If you want to do that now, just click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Alternatively, at a later date, just simply Google help me CarWow, and my team and I will help you choose the right car and get it for a fair price. Here on the inside, the Toyota BZ4X is very interesting looking. It's futuristic. This steering wheel, the way it's lower than the instruments, and that looks good, but for some people it's going to be a touch annoying. A bit like in the same way that on a Peugeot with the small steering wheel and the dials above. Depending on where you like sitting and having the steering wheel, the actual rim can block some of the dials it's just about okay for me, and I quite like the quirky nature of it. Now, quality in here is really, really good. I like it. Oh, I like that fabric, especially up there. And the seats are nice. The engine level car gets a smaller screen than this, but the big screen looks pretty impressive. However, if I put this car into reverse, the reversing cameras and the surround view cameras are like the lowest def I've ever seen in my life. Also, it's not quite as high tech as you think. While you get wireless Apple CarPlay, you don't get wireless Android Auto, you have to plug it in. Though, to be fair, I do prefer plugged in Android Auto than wireless, because it's just easier to disconnect your phone rather than having to you know, disconnect your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You just unplug it. Anyway, that's just me. Now, one thing that does annoy me specifically about this car is the way a lot of the functions are controlled through the screen and buttons on the steering wheel. Why is it that you can't just control them through the car setting? There's hardly anything that you can do with this infotainment system, really, apart from sat and have music and stuff like that. They put all of the systems through here. Odd. I know it's handy when you're driving, but you set most of the things up before you actually drive. Anyhow, practicality isn't bad though, so look under here. Oh, come on, we've got some storage, just some big cup holders there. Place there for your mobile phone and a wireless charging pad, and it's sort of see-through. I don't know why they've done that, because I think you should keep your mobile phone out of sight so it doesn't distract you. There's your charging port there as well. Also, look, you've got decent-sized door bins and some more storage under here with a 12-volt socket and two other charging ports and another place. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? There it is, where you can actually store your mobile phone. Though not my phone because it's one of these Galaxy Folds which are a bit bulky. Will it fit in like that? Will it? Will it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's less than perfect. There's absolutely loads of room here in the back of the BZ4X. Look, loads of knee room, loads of headroom. You can stretch out as well. The floor is almost completely flat and that, plus the fact this middle seat is quite comfy, means that even when you have two adults either side of you, it's quite comfy in this middle seat. In fact, there is loads of room because the body on this car is nice and wide. I also like this. Oh, you've got an armrest here, it's nice and wide as well. You've got two cup holders there. Yeah, but you do end up putting your wrist in them. And there's this little cutaway here, which I think is for putting your iPad in there. But I don't know who can watch their iPad like, like that. That's, that. That's not really very comfortable. Maybe it's for something else and I don't know about it. Let me know in the comments below. Now, there's two USB-Cs here for charging your mobile devices. You've also got decent sized door bins as well. Another thing I like is that the quality from the front extends all the way here into the back, like it doesn't on VW Group products. And I also like this, the way the windows go all the way down. 
But not only that, the mechanism of the window itself, look how it slows down when it's reaching the end of its travel. Look, that's really satisfying. And again, look. Ooh. Now, if you find these reviews satisfying, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. One last thing to tell you is that if you need to fit a baby seat, the doors don't open quite as wide as you think they would, but there's still enough space to get even a bulky rear-facing seat into the back here. Dice fixed anchor points aren't uncovered, but they're not the hardest to get to. And there is so much room back here that actually is fitting a baby seat and dealing with a baby is really, really easy. Well, as easy as dealing with a baby can ever be. The boot capacity on the BZ4X is 452 litres, which actually is big, but not that big compared to other electric SUVs. For instance, an Audi Q4 e-tron, its boot capacity is 520 litres. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below, you can see my full in-depth video review of that car. It's not all bad though, look, there is no load lip, so it's easy to slide heavy items like this camera case in and out. Underneath here, you have some extra storage. And when you fold the seats down, you think, oh, brilliant, I've got a completely flat floor. But you haven't, because actually you've got this fabric covering the gap between the boot floor and the seat backs. And it does actually dip a little bit. So if you try and push a heavy item to the front, it gets caught there. So you end up having to kind of work it in like that. <sighs> Which is a bit frustrating. I'll tell you what else is frustrating. Look at this. There is no front boot. I suppose I could just about squeeze these cables in there. Look at that. There we go. I'm sure that is perfectly safe to do that. Anyhow, that brings me to five annoying things about this car. For a supposedly practical SUV, this car bizarrely doesn't have a glove box. Now the designer of the interior said that they made that decision not to have one because they want to increase the knee space for the front passenger and that his wife was never able to put her handbag into a glove box of a car, it's never big enough. So they instead said that you can use that space for storage. The only problem with that is that that space is visible through the window. With a glove box, you can hide valuables away. I think they got it wrong. When charging using AC, this car will only charge at six kilowatts rather than the standard seven of most electric cars, which means that when you plug it into your wall box at home, it'll charge a little bit slower than one of its key rivals. Also, it means that if you find one of those quicker AC chargers at a public charging station, you can't take the benefit of it. To use Android Auto, you have to plug your phone into this socket there. The issue is that depending on the size of your phone, you can't quite fit it in this tray with the cable. Oh, God. It's a bit weird for an SUV such as this not to have a rear window wiper. Now, I do get that if you're driving along and it's raining, the airflow will help clean the screen. But what happens if you've been parked and there's muck all over it and you need to set the back window? You're going to have to get out and clean it by hand, aren't you? For some reason, whenever you put this car into reverse, it bongs at you like that. Look, I don't need that. I'm, I'm not driving a forklift truck. Why is it bonging at me on the inside? I can understand it bonging to someone at the outside, but why inside the cabin? Annoying. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool features about this car, including this. Look, it's got something called X mode, which was developed by Subaru. They're off-road experts and actually partly owned by Toyota. And what it does is control the amount of drive going to the front and rear axle, depending on the conditions. So you can set it up for snow and mud or deep snow and deep mud. Just perfect for going across your country estate. I like this. There is a dedicated cutout, look, for the load cover. It means that it's not gonna get yeeted. Just tossed gently. Aye! I thought you were gonna catch it. <laughs> One of the things I love about Toyota is that it's very generous with its equipment. For instance, all versions of the BZ4X get adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist, so a radar will keep you a safe distance from the car in front so you don't have to brake and accelerate, and it'll auto steer to keep you in lane. Thank you very much, Toyota, it's very kind of you. You can operate the car's air conditioning remotely using the key fob. So let's say it's a hot day, you just have to go to your front window and then press this button, hold it, and the air conditioning will come on. Listen, you'll hear the fans start up. There we go, you hear it. And that means that when you finally come to get in your car and drive off, oh, it's nice and cool inside. 
Sorry to maybe late to the EV party, but they're not late to the yoke steering wheel party. Yes, they've copied Tesla, and you can get a yoke steering wheel for this BZ4X. And it also has steer by wire, where it's not actually connected to the front wheels, it's all done by electronics. For the avoidance of doubt, Toyota has handily put the word electric here on the charging port, so you don't accidentally just try and fill this car up with petrol. Anyway, th is this the largest charging port on any electric car? I mean, that's completely unnecessary. Anyhow, the battery capacity on this car is 71 kilowatt hours. The range on this car varies from 286 miles on a full charge for the four wheel drive version up to 317 miles for the front wheel drive version. Now, the front wheel drive version has 204 horsepower, and the all wheel drive version has 218 horsepower. Not many more horsepower. I don't know, don't know why that is. Just Anyhow, this car can charge on DC current at up to 150 kilowatts, and if you can find a 150 kilowatt charger and your battery's all warmed up and everything, it should charge from 20% to 80% full in 30 minutes. Now, which is the best version of the BZ4X to go for in terms of front wheel drive, all wheel drive, and which trim level? Well, I've built my favorite version using the CarWow configurator, and if you want to see what it is, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. All right, let's see what this new Toyota is like to drive. First thing to note is the driving position is pretty good. Great view access, sitting up high. You do get these big blind spots caused by these pillars, but you've got these extra little windows here. The back window is it's a decent size, so I can see out of it quite well. The problem is the rear pillars are so huge that when you're putting out junctions like that, they do create a massive blind spot. Cannot fault the suspension though. Sometimes electric cars can be overly firm because they have to deal with the weight of the batteries. This one is good for an electric car. It deals with bumps quite well. I'm, I'm gonna seek out some horrible bumps in this part of the road, and it's soaking them up rather nicely. Better than most of its competitors, to tell you the truth. I do like the steering in this car though, nice and light for around town, and the brakes. Sometimes in electric cars, they can be grabby. Not here, they're nice and smooth and progressive. It's a comfy car to travel in, and of course, it's very quiet. Yeah, the turning circle on this car is really good. Just let this guy go. 11.4 meters, which is impressive. Hopefully I'll be able to get around here in one go. Will it make it? Yeah, so it's a really tight turning circle. Though it's not quite as tight as a Volkswagen ID4, which has a turning circle of 10.2 meters. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. What's not so good is this though. You have this button here, which is for one pedal driving. It means when you lift off the accelerator, you get quite intense braking from the motor, it's putting power back into the battery, but not actually using the friction brakes. And in some cars, you can lift off the accelerator and it will bring the car to a complete stop, but not here. It always creeps forward ever so slightly. Just a bit creepy. I don't know why they just don't make it full one pedal driving like a Nissan Leaf. <sighs> so then what's the BZ4X like to drive on a twisty road? Well, you know, being a tall electric SUV, it's obviously gonna be a bag of rubbish, right? Well, surprisingly, no. This thing doesn't lean too much in the bends. Look, here comes a corner now. I'm gonna chuck it in. What's it gonna do? It's going to grip on and go round. <laughs> it actually does really well for such a car. It's surprising. Now the steering isn't like dead darty like in a Tesla Model Y, which actually, to be fair, can feel a little bit hyperactive. It's just nice and sedate, but accurate. I wouldn't say it's quite as sporty to drive as a Kira V6, but it does a decent enough job if you want to get a hustle on to get to your destination quickly, and that involves going through some country lanes. I'm impressed. Okay, I'm just gonna check the efficiency of this car. On the course I've just driven, I'm averaging 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Now the car is supposed to do 286 miles on a charge, but when you use that efficiency and multiply it out by its battery capacity of 71 kilowatt hours, that means the real world range, based on how I've been driving, is 250 miles, which is actually pretty good. Toyota says the BZ4X will do 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds, which isn't particularly quick for an electric car at this price. But I'm gonna see what it does in reality. I've got my specialist timing gear up here. Let's do it. Pretty quick. I wouldn't say the performance is electrifying like some other electric cars, but there we go. 0 to 60, 6.2 seconds. So quicker than they said, but not quite as quick as the competition. Finally, I'm gonna do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Let's see how long it takes this car to stop if I slam on the anchors in panic and go full ABS braking like now. <laughs> ah. Ah, just imagine that something like a badger ran out in front of me. Okay, so that took 35 meters to stop, which is all right, but not brilliant. <laughs> Thank you.
So then what's my final verdict on the Toyota BZ4X? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist this car. It really is a good all round family electric SUV. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict for this car in the comments below. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can find out how much your car is really worth. You just upload some photos, give a brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. Thanks for watching.